Well, as you all can see, Pastor Jeff and First Lady Monica are not here this evening. They're actually away taking a much needed time of rest, a time together, a time for their hearts to just be reconnected and to just re be revived. They've had a lot going on. And so we miss them when they're gone, absolutely. But also, every time they're gone, Pastor Jeff makes sure that the best of the best is here for us. He always plans that somebody is here who's got his heart, who speaks his message, and, and more importantly, speaks God's message. And so tonight we have Pastor Terry Francis with us, so I ask that you would please stand to your feet and let's give him a warm welcome as he comes up on the stage. Oh, God bless you. Everybody stood except my wife. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I love her so much. This is my wife. I'm glad she was able to come with me tonight. Um, God bless all of you and, and the efforts that you're you committing to the Lord through your service and through your uh, triumphant victories over any and everything that comes your way. Uh, I mentioned... <clears throat> this morning that my <clears throat> my commitment to God on a personal level uh, began to grow through adversity. I, I had to either be in or out. Uh, you know, the, the level of things that I had caused upon myself and upon my family uh, through some just horrible choices, it wasn't going to take uh, a real casual, cavalier approach to coming out. No. No, no, no. I, I couldn't have the posture, uh, I can take it or leave it. I needed it. Life depended on it. So I needed to commit to it. Regardless of what it looked like, I needed to commit to the process which in turn really strengthened my trust in God's ability to bring me out. Commitment and trust is two different things. I'm not preaching on that, but it's kind of it's uh, uh, weaving into the message. You have to abstract it out. Uh, uh, but it's trust and commitment is totally different. My commitment to God is I'm committed to him uh, and, and to his word. And, and, but when I trust him, it really, it really speaks to how committed I am. When I trust him, uh, whether it happens or not, I, I don't go anywhere. I, I'm, I'm locked in. And, and I'm able to get to a place Come on, bring it on, devil. Go on, do what you're going to do. I know you got something playing because it's just not like you to leave folks like me and you alone. It's not in his nature to just to back off because we're doing some things that's fruitful. Nah. We're going to talk about spiritual warfare. Warfare, spiritual warfare doesn't begin with a problem. We got a scripture here, we're going to talk about it later, but everyone has problems, issues. Spiritual warfare takes place when uh, I begin to trust God for those solutions. When I begin to commit everything to him for solutions to my problems, now all hell breaks loose. Now all hell breaks loose. I, I, I'm going to say this, is that in, in, in every aspect of the military, they have a particular branch that's called special forces. 
Now, now these folks here have a unique set of skills and they've been trained differently. They, they wired differently. The green, not everybody can be a green beret. No. No, they, do, they throw you through psychological testing to see if you're going to crack under pressure. Uh, uh, what, what's that one movie with Mark Wahlberg? They falling down them hills and all that. You might not Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Long Survivor. I'm like, holy buckets. <laughs> hey, you know what? Just pick me up, man. But they train differently. They wired differently. And so are you. Wait, I'm not saying you're going to be thrown off the building. <laughs> but God train you by the best he has. That's the enemy. That's no training uh, better training than he can provide. So let's go into some of this word. Let's crack some things open. Hopefully God will speak to you. If not, you got to say hi to some friends. <laughs> so Father, it's in Jesus' mighty and precious name that we come. We come vulnerable, dependent on you and you alone. Now we ask that you speak to our hearts. Go to a, a place of depthness in our spirit. Cement some things down. Anchor some things down that we can hold on to. God, we need you. So speak now, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this place. It's in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, let's, let's get down to it. I don't know if it's the connection up here or what. But we're going to look at uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 54, 16 through 17 says, Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage. Somebody say heritage. heritage. This is the heritage of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, said the Lord. Isaiah is encouraging the people of God because of some things they had been dealing with. They had been going through a, a just a cycle of, of, of abuse and issues and abandonment and captured. They, they was seeming like as though God was so removed from their situation so they, they was sort of numb to what the enemy was doing in their mess. You, you, can be, you can be captured and you can be in bondage so long to where freedom feels different. You, you can be in a place so long to where uh, Coming out of it, 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 it feels awkward. Now, I'm not going to get into addiction, but I came out of addiction. And I deal with folks in addiction. I've been doing it for 20 years. And, and that's sort of the, the minor relapse. This, this seems odd. This, this seems odd. I can't really find my niche here. And man, people are too nice. It, where I'm from, folks are rude. And, and, and I haven't learned, learned how to be nice yet. So 
And I don't know if I'm going to fit in. Are they looking? Are they thinking? What they judging? You know what? I'll just go back over here. At least I don't feel like. This is the unique thing about serenity. Because a fo folks can come in here and, and, and feel no, no judgment. None. Am I right? You ought to give yourself a hand. I, I mean, hey. Yeah, any and everybody. But, but go to the next slide. Because this the connection, I think it's up here trying to use this fancy stuff. And, and so, so it says that I want to I wanna highlight something about, and he says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And, and I want to highlight this, this part about a, a, a servant. Because the heritage is what we're going to hit on the end here. But the heritage is for the servants of the Lord. All of the things that happened to Israel, God was in control of. He was saying, I, I'm in control of the blacksmith. Even though he blows the coal, I, I'm still in charge of this cat. I, I'm, there's nothing come your way that I'm not in charge of. I'm the one that says, have you considered my servant Job? I, I'm the one that did that. It wasn't that Job pulled the, 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 the short straw. God said, have you considered my servant Terry? Have you considered Duke? Ha have you considered, and add your name in there. Or are you at a place where God can consider you? Because he knows that there's a level in you that you're not moving regardless of what happened. See, this is where God wants us to come to. Now, if you're not there, this is not judgment. If you're not there, no, 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 no. You, you need to know you're not there. You, it's smart to know what you can and cannot do. A am I right? But servant... In this, tent, in this text is uh, Ed Bay. The servant was not a free man. He was subject to the will and the commands or uh, the command of his master. But one might willingly and lovingly submit to his master, remaining in his service when he was not obligated to do so. This is a fitting description between the relationship of God and man. In this Hebrew text or, or, of a servant, it, it's really denoting what they call a bond servant. Because a servant, if you look up and start comparing uh, uh, all of this weird Greek and all of this stuff, it, it actually talks about a slave. A slave was given freedom, but chose willingly and lovingly to submit. Chose to stay on board. See, see, the choice that we have to serve God is a willing choice. It's, it's, it's a willing choice. It's not out of selfish reason. We... He, we love him because he first loved us. He called us from a place of isolation to a place of community. He's done so many marvelous things in our midst. How can we turn our back on him? Now, now, now not everybody willingly do that. Going into a bond servant is one that is willingly serving God. Serving God. How, how do you, what is that? What is a servant? What is a servant? Uh, it, uh, 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 James and John, uh, the, the two brothers of Zebedee, their mother went to Jesus and, and, and she said, uh, Jesus, uh, I need to ask you a favor. Can my sons, both of my sons, can, 
can one sit on your right hand and one sit on your left hand when you make it to heaven. And Jesus say, I don't know if you realize what you asking me. But, but hey, hey, lady, it's not for me to grant that. But, but let me drop this on you. For, for, for he that wants to be the greatest amongst you, let him become servant of all. To become great in God's eyes is to serve God's people. Hey. Well, 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 Jesus just didn't tell them that. If you continue to read on that dialogue, that's when the next step Jesus did was wash his disciples' feet. He was showing them this act of humility and serving his people. There, there's no better, hey, I always say I wasn't going to mention your pastor, but I can't help but mention your pastor. See, I, I talk to him once or twice a week, and I ask him some of the same stuff. How you doing? You getting in the rest. And it always ends with, what the heck, man? <laughs> he, he, he just got this, you know, he just got this motor to where it's like, holy buckets, who can keep up with it? Am I right? Yeah. Uh huh. But but this is the thing. If you if you catch this spirit, this guy's serving people. Holy cow. He is serving people. If you want to be the greatest, become the best servant. Willingly. Not reluctantly. So 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 tomorrow night, tomorrow night, right, with the sandwiches? Yeah, yeah see, ain't no van gonna come by there and lay on the horn. Bye. <laughs> and show up. Yep. Let's knock this out in like 20 minutes, you know what I'm Come saying? On. Come on. Yeah. Knock this out now. Hey, 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 listen. It, this, is, this, this serving thing is pretty good. I, I, I got to share this thing, and I shared it. See, see, when we accept Jesus, the shed blood of Christ in our hearts, uh, uh, we, we are, are adopted into the family of Christ, and, and we become... Uh, new, new, have new titles, new labels. We become sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters of God. My son, my oldest, he's a, he's away in college, and boy, we almost got one more to go, right, baby? And they all gone. You know what I'm saying? We gonna lock the doors. Put them shutters on there, be peeping out like a bunch of addicts in there, like look at that, look at the curtains. It's the kids, be quiet. You know how, how trick or treaters when you ain't got candy? We, we trick or treaters, we, we tiptoe in our own house. Like they can hear us. My, my son, uh, he was like 15, 16 years old. I saw him one day, he was throwing some stuff in the trash and he was trying to balance it so it won't fall out. It was just that fool, you know what I'm saying? He's thinking if it don't fall over, it ain't, you know. So he's just trying to balance it on there. I'm watching this guy. I'm like, dude, take the trash out. Oh, okay. <laughs> grass that tall. Tell him, hey, hey, cut the grass. Oh, okay, Dad. I had to tell him, if I told him he did he was my son being, being sons and daughters of God God tell you something you do it when you go into from a son or a daughter to a servant no need to tell you you see it you see what needs to be done and you willingly just do it go go to the next slide I, I Listen, being a servant simply means to listen, 
then do whatever he tells you. One who is distinguished as obedient and faithful, whether, oh, 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 look, did I put it in there? God had sinned. Was that a typo? No. No, no, no. Remember, a servant has that two meaning. A slave. See, before coming to Christ, we become slaves of sin. And, and I don't know how many can relate to what I'm saying. Becoming a slave to sin, and, and I got to use my life of addiction. It's like dragging a ball and chain. I, 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 can't, I can't get out from under this. I, 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 I don't want that anymore. I, I don't want what the life is producing. But I could not get out. I could not free myself. I don't know about you. I could not free myself. So when the song says my, my chains are gone, I've been set free. I, I didn't free myself. He freed me from the bondages of sin. Now I am a servant of his. I'm obedient, distinguished. It's a distinct obedience. I hear what he tells me to do, and I does it. Listen, I put my, my phone in here, but no, I don't need the honey. honey. But see, I, I use this analogy. Saul on the road of Damascus, on the beast with other men. The Bible says that a light shone from heaven and knocked him off his beast. And a voice cried out, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And this dialogue between Saul and his voice and these other men was astonished. Read it. The Bible says, for the men was astonished. Why was they astonished? It tells you. For they saw the light, but they didn't hear the voice. What, what that has to do with a cell phone? If my cell phone rings audibly, you can hear the ring. But if I push it, I get the message. Even though you hearing me talk, some people may not get what God is saying. But this is, hey listen, this is where messages is directed right to you. You've been in places... When you become a servant of God, you go to places where you come away from there and it seemed like the pastor was speaking directly to you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? What, what, no, this pastor, God was speaking something directly to you. When he speaks to us, listen, he typically speaks with us for instructions to doing something. Listen, our act of, of servanthood is in our doing. Service is not just laying vain, just sitting down waiting on stuff to come. Listen, when I begin to serve God, I don't seek his hand of what he can give me. I seek his face. Well, if I seek the face of God, guess what comes with his face? His hand. When I begin to do what he tells me to do, goodness and mercy follow me. Next one. First Peter says, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fire trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceedingly joy. Well, Peter is encouraging the Jewish believers that's now is, is, is coming this way. This was, I'm not going to go into this, but there was so much division of schisms in, in, in that early start with Paul because Paul was raised up to be 
a light to who? The Gentiles. His message was for the Gentiles. Peter walked with Jesus. Peter heard Jesus call Gentiles dogs. Oh, I know I'm going to go somewhere with this now. Well, let me tell you about the lady. The lady who came and, 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 and was asked, and, and, and Jesus said, it's not, holy to, it's not right to give that which is holy unto who? The dogs. And she said, even the what? Dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the master's table. Jesus was calling the Jewish people to come. Once all of that happened, Saul was converted for the sake of the Gentiles. But now he was, he was excluded from the club because they like, man, we walk with Jesus. We know what he did. All of, what, are you, what are you doing, Paul? Well, where did this guy come from? Who, who taught you? Who told you to do this? And that was a division. I shouldn't have got into it, but I said, hey, hey, Paul rebuked him. He rebuked all of them. Now, Peter done come around, and these Jewish believers are being saved. But this is what's happened. They're being persecuted. They're being burned at the stakes. Now he's saying, beloved, don't think it's strange concerning foul trials. And that wasn't just a coin trade. They was actually being burned. So he's telling the rest of them, hey, hey, let me meet with everybody. Hey, you, you, might, be, <laughs> you might be put on fire. But don't, don't think it's strange. Well, what the heck you mean don't think it's strange? <laughs> don't you think that's a little strange? He's telling them, don't, don't think as, as though you had a, a run of bad luck. As a believer, don't think it's strange when you are going through one thing after another. You can't catch your breath. It's one thing after another. I am persecuted on every hand. It's one trial after another. But he says, but rejoice to the extent that you are partakers in Christ's suffering. That when his glory is revealed, that you may also be glad with exceedingly joy. Could you turn to the next one, please? Matthew says that, He said that you may be sons of your father in heaven and he may and he makes his son rise on the evil and the good and send the rain on the just and the unjust. It does not matter if you serve in him or not. You're going to go through trials and tribulations the rain fell on both houses. The wind blew on both houses. The one that did not sink, it was because of the foundation it was on. So it, the trials is coming to both. Whether you serve, So you might as well serve God. Well, how can you explain that these trials make one person buckle? The same trials make one person grow. The same sun make one plant wither and this make one plant grow. It's where it's planted. It's where we are planted. If we are planted in his righteousness, there's no concern about whatever takes place in our life. Whatever battle we have to face, whatever the victory, it's his. It doesn't really matter. So we are in spiritual warfare. And the warfare that we in is a little bit more strategic. It's a little bit more strategic where we, the enemy just doesn't throw a lot of stuff on the ground. A lot of 
slippery stuff and hopefully we come through too fast and lose our footing and fall or just throw a lot of stuff at me or a lot of stuff at you. No, it's, it's a little bit more strategic than that. Go to the next one. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth the, an instrument of his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon, no weapon, regardless of what the weapon is, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me. Next, please. This is what I want to, when it says no weapon, no weapon. This word weapon and that word form are both, this is the definition in Hebrew. Kili, weapons, kili, means a prepared artillery. It's, it's not happenstance, it's not, this is targeted. These attacks are targeted. No, no weapon formed against you. The blacksmith takes the iron, heats it, put it on the anvil, and he shapes it. He forms it. This, this is the connotation that the enemy takes this weapon, this artillery, and he prepares it specifically for me. Something that would work for me may not work for you. If you don't know what weapon would get you, <sighs> Hebrews 12.1, seeing that we are passed about with such greater cloud of witness, let us run the race that is set before us. Looking unto him, the author and the finish, sure of our faith, and laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset me. The sin. There's a particular sin that doesn't require a lot of effort for me. There's a particular sin that doesn't require a lot of effort for you. We're not exempt from the enemy's attack. And he's going to come with areas of weakness, areas of vulnerability. I know where I'm going. I need to know what will distract me, what will compromise. If there's areas of financing and I can't count, <laughs> I need to marry somebody that can. <laughs> Well, it just seemed so simple. Formed, Yatsar is mounted, fashioned, framed. For what? For a particular purpose. It, that's why I like the story of Samson. I, I, I really like the story of Samson. And I taught only one, 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 uh, Tuesday night here. In the story of Samson, most people think Samson fell because he was, couldn't control his lust. <coughs> Got to be more. Right? More to it than that. You read it. There was a vow that his mother made. He was a Nazareth. There was there was a covenant that was made that he shouldn't drink no strong drink. He shouldn't eat no unclean or even come near an unclean body. He should keep himself consecrated from, from other women and he should not let a razor cut his hair. He broke all of them. Most people think, well, it was Delilah. <laughs> Read it. This guy was a nut. <laughs> he was rebellious. He was 
rebellious to the court. He killed a lion, went to a bachelor party, came back. By the time he came back, the lion, it was a caucus. So he had to stay a long while, and it was a honey. It was bees that made a honeycomb inside the lion's dead body. He went in, read it. He went into there, and he ate it, and then what did he do? Anybody know? He brought it to his parents. Say, eat this. Delilah was sent. The lords of the Philistines came to her and said, come here. We want you to entrap him. Entrapment means set a hook. Cash your line. Lure him in. And that's what this is. The enemy lures and traps and fish. And he knows those that like night crawlers. <laughs> I shouldn't leave them night crawlers alone. Uh, he knows what kind of bait. We got any fishermen or women in here? Oh, look at that. Well, you understand this. Would you be successful not putting anything on the hook? No, with the enemy. Why would he go after us with an empty hook? It's fashion. Next one. These are five areas that I put up here to kind of bring some things into focus. Target areas where this enemy can, can really fashion and mount an attack in our life. Number one is our faith. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has acts for you. I volunteered Job, but he acts for you. <laughs> you, you, you let that marinate. I, I, I said, have you considered my servant Job? I, I brought Job's name up, but he acts for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Man, that's a cool thing with Jesus praying for you. Eh? I have prayed for you that your faith fell it not. I can pray for you. I can do everything. But what's going to get you through is your faith. You have to believe that God is who he said he is. And that your faith fell it not. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. So the enemy sets a fashion, a molded, a design attack against our faith. There's things that could come to us and cripple our faith. He starts this off at very, very young ages. I have a, I've met thousands of men, and not only men, women, who they go on this 20 year, 30 year journey of drug addiction because their faith was shaken when they were smaller, when they didn't understand why mommy died or why daddy died or why grandpa died. And, and they couldn't wrap their mind around it and there was no one there to really usher them into the faith and the purpose of God. And it shakes their faith to the core. There's some things that can happen to you if you're not prepared. It can shake you to the center of who you are. And everything that you thought you believe becomes shifty and shaken. The prophet says that when I watch the prosperity of the wicked... And the righteous are not prosperous. He said, I almost fainted. But he said, but I went into the sanctuary of the Lord. That's where he found hope. Another attack could be family. To understand God's nature, his gospel, his church, we need to understand family. 
we have to have a, a real good understanding of the significance of family. Peter refers to the church as the household of God. Timothy, in many of his writings, refers to the church as the family of God. When you come outside of yourself and join into a particular body, you are joining a family. Serenity is a family. Somebody say amen. amen. This is a family. This is a family. This is a family. When one hurt, we all hurt. Rejoice with them that rejoice. You're connected in more ways than one. If you don't, if you feel isolated, then it's because you choose to. This is a wide open family. Just like your natural family. Anybody has brothers? Have you ever fought with them? You beat them too, didn't you? <laughs> don't mean you don't love them. Don't mean you don't love them. Most people have this perception of church where I come into church and then that all of that, I leave all of that behind. Well, what are you talking about? I leave all of that stuff on the outside. What the heck? Well, this is, this is just a shell. This is just a place where you congregate. You are the church. You are the church. You are the family. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. When the church is doing what it's doing as a family, you bring, oh, glory to God. You bring those that are down, you bring them up. Those that are up too high, you bring them down. Understanding that, if you don't get any of this, understanding that the enemy has a fashion, molded, designed attack against your family, your children, your grandchildren, your pastor, the first lady, the associate pastor, the parking lot attendants, the sound people, the worship people, you, me, why? Because I'm a part of something of significance. He doesn't want us to be a part of something of significance. When we start embarking on answers to spiritual problems, then all hell breaks loose. The closer and closer we get. And, and, and listen. The thing about serenity, and I said it almost probably one of the first time I preached here. I said this thing was going to blow up. Was anybody in here when I preached that? Yeah. I said this thing was going to go to a whole different level. He, God just getting the people prepared. The family members. He's getting, the, he got the pastors in where he needs to be. Now he got to get the aunts and the uncles. <laughs> Think. Think. You got aunts and uncles, sometimes it's closer than mom. Yeah. You got grandpas with the wisdom. <laughs> Grandmothers. Well, think, well, well, I'm not. Titus says for the older women to teach the young. Teach them how to be modest. It's the family of God. When you start doing something like this, because what Serena is doing, nobody's in the country is doing this. I'm telling you, nobody is doing something this unique and the people that is targeted
So as we get the uncles, the uncles and the, everybody in place, then it's kind of like for you old farmers, it's like open up the, 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 the chute. Pull that chute back and here come the grain. Just kind of dumps out. I want you to picture it. Next design attack, finances. Take away financial stability and everything falls apart. The enemy understands that when a person lacks financial stability, it, you can make bad decisions. You make horrible decisions. So he has a design attack against your finances. We need to be strategic in dealing with finances. You need to be strategic how dealing with finances. Throwing stuff this way to all that old debt, that, that's dead money. Get it? Chunk it back. I begin to understand mutual funds and annuities. Educate yourself where you get a return. That's throwing it to that way. But if that crashes, you in trouble. I got a different idea. Throw it up to him. <laughs> huh? Throw it up to him. Why would I do that? Good measures. Press down. Huh? Shaking together. And what? Huh? Somebody say, what? Running over. Well, that, that's just in the scriptures. Well, God. Don't let this can come alive in your life. If you understand what this happens, well, if you're part of serenity, watch your pastor. Grab that spirit, what he has. Ask him questions about it. He'll tell you. He'll answer you. The enemy attack your finances. Health, physical, mental, emotional. See it, 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 some of these attacks can be relentless and, and, and you can't bear it. Be relentless. Understanding that a physical attack is, is out to wear you down. It takes you from believing, from getting up, trying to fight, trying to, you get wore out. I can't do it. Something's wrong with me. Something has to be wrong with me. Something's wrong with me. I think different, man. I keep making, ain't nothing wrong with you. You who God, God is who you, he made you who you are. You need to make that work. I, I, I added this part this morning. I was sharing with you guys, uh, and this is no thing. Roxanne, she don't even like me mentioning this stuff. Roxanne, well, it was 2009, eight, eight. We was coming, we was in New York, and we trying to catch stuff, and I said, girl, your leg is dragging. And she came in and got checked and was diagnosed with MS. And at first, you know, it's, it's really hard. It's really challenging. Really challenging. It's progressive. It's really challenging. So one of the board members say, Terry, my wife been having MS for 25 years. It'd be good for the gals to get together and talk, so let's go out for dinner. Man, this woman here. It's the most negative woman we ever met in our life, huh, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, it's almost like, lady, shut up. <laughs> I mean, she was talking about, man, yeah, yeah, I just, you know, I wake up one morning and my right eye, I can't see out of it. Then the next morning I wake up, I can't get out of bed. I just lay there all day. We like, whoa. <laughs> we left out of there. We got in the car in the parking lot. I said, you know what? Forget what that lady said. Shoot, man, forget what that lady said. Jonathan McReynolds said, I just got to learn to walk with my limp. 
All of us have a limp. A limp is something that just kind of makes us look different. Some people just can camouflage and look like nothing wrong with them. Huh? It's all together. And maybe that's the case. Well, God bless you. I'm so proud of you. But for the majority of us, we got to learn to deal with it. And as she was kind of making me some breakfast this morning, getting some stuff, I kind of saw her going over with a with little limp, little cute limp. And I put that in there. Because she ain't complaining. It ain't doing no good. She's learned to walk with it and live with it. Still trusting what God says he is able to do. Amen? And inheritance. The promises of God. This is a thing that he targets. Can I get the worship team? This is a thing that he targets. He said, this is the heritage. Isaiah said, this is the heritage of the servants of God. This is the heritage of the servants of God. This is the heritage of the servants of God. This is the heritage. What is the heritage? What is my inheritance? What is it? What is it? See, it, listen. The, in the end, we win because this world won't take it out of us. This is not my resting place. If I don't buckle under the pressure that my final victory place is triumphant with him, Amen. where righteousness and truth shall reign forever and ever and ever, I will be the overcomer. I will be the one that John, on the, the apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, when he said, who are those that are raised in white garments? Who are all of those that are wearing these white garments? And the angel says, these are they that overcome every obstacle. These are they that walk through every trial, every fiery trial. That's who they are. That's who you are. That's who I am. Regardless of what we're battling, in the end, we're going to win. Just don't give up. Be sensitive to one another. Be sensitive to one another. The family of God sticks together. Just like your children. Moms and dads, you can ask them a question What's going on? They can't say nothing and you know it's something. You know something is off. You know something is off. That's the mother's and father instinct, the intuition. That's what we bring to this family right here. What's going on? How you doing? What, what, what? Well, I'm struggling. What's going on? What do you need? This takes you to a whole different level. Because when you understand that he doesn't want you to understand your inheritance. So he's going to deal with all of this other stuff. All of this stuff. The blacksmith, the forging, the steel, and all of the things that's coming your way. Children going ding ding. Husband is knucklehead. All of these moving parts. I made reference to single mothers. I, I want to encourage single mothers. I want to encourage you, single mothers. There's something about you. There's something down on the inside of you. You have something to offer the body of Christ. Sometimes that enemy wants to make us feel isolated, that we don't have nothing. I'm doing this all by myself. But you have more to offer than you think. 
I'm here to tell you it's time to step up and be a mother to some of these kids. Listen, this is your moment. A single mother, she does it all. She got to believe. She got to have the faith. If she don't believe, what else going to happen? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's tougher than you think. So I want to encourage the single mothers. I do. I want to encourage all of you. Regardless of what we're facing. Regardless of the battle. We're not going anywhere. So devil going to do what you're going to do. Surrender the village. This family ain't going nowhere. The attacks. So when the first lady gets back. You lavish her. With love. And support. Are you hearing me? Talk to me in here, somebody. This is your mother. Now, I understand. Listen. I understand. But this is just who I am. This, don't you never heard me preach? Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have told you I'm a little nothing. Uh, but I just want you to know that, come on. I'm ready for warfare. I'm ready to do battle. Because I know in the end, I have an inheritance. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told King Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us in the fire furnace. It doesn't matter. Go and do what you're going to do, man. Because the God we serve, he will deliver us. But even if he don't, He's able. So we trust him for healing. But even if he don't, we won't go back and compromise. We don't walk with that limp. We don't get through this thing together. We going all the way through this thing together. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Listen. It's seven. Whatever. If we have, if we have some leadership here, people that can minister, if you want to come forward, I really believe I want to do a couple things. This, as they get in position, could, could I get the lights on a little bit out here for a second? When I'm talking about of those who have accepted the shed blood of Jesus, they have acknowledged that I'm a son of need and savior. And Jesus died to save me. And I want what you have for me and they've accepted what he did for them now once that happened they move to sons and daughters because now you had adopted into the family of Christ a family of believers then the process of sanctification takes place so I want to I want to listen we're a family here. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, if you have not given your heart to Jesus, I want to open that invitation. And we're going to love you. We're going to embrace you. You can be connected to the family of God. If that's you, I want you to come on up right now. If you've never given your heart to Jesus and you want to do so, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Now, second invitation. Sometimes we can get discouraged. 
feel like we're all alone in our struggles. This is a place where you can be vulnerable. You can open up. You can share. You can connect. And some things can hit us and shake our faith like a, a, a hurricane and just leave debris all over. And I'm left to pick up the pieces. We want to stand with you and pray that God will encourage you. We want to pray that your faith fell it not. So if you feeling discouraged and feeling though that you, you kind of holding on to the end of the rope, we, we just want to tie a knot at the end so you won't lose your grip. That's all we want to do is just pray. That's all we want to do. And if you want us to pray for you, won't you come on up right now? As the worship team plays, these altars are open for prayer. And then I'll come up and close us in the end.
Surround us around those that can influence us toward purpose. God, we thank you for all that you're doing in our life. Regardless of where we are, we're going to make it. We're determined to make it. Regardless if I have a limp, if I don't have $5 in the bank, I'm still going to make it. But God, I pray that those that are connected with this body become sensitive to the needs. And God, that we will minister to the orphans and the mothers and the widows. 
God bless serenity, blesses leadership, bless all the things that they're involved with. Bless the people that are here tonight. Now as we leave this place, but never your presence, I pray you would keep us. The love of God would guide us, protect us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said,